Oshali Ayokobuchu, Minister for Foreign Affairs and Regional Integration, and then His Excellency Honorable Musalia Mudavadi, who signed a joint communique, please. A round of applause for them. Thank you very much, Honorable Ministers. of applause. Thank you very much. Yes, <laughs> Shall we welcome the presence of our two first ladies with a round of applause, please. They've just joined us. <laughs> now the press briefing. It is my distinct honor and privilege to invite the President of the Republic to address the press, please. and gentlemen of the media. I've just concluded a brief but very successful meeting with the President of the Republic of Kenya, His Excellency William Ruto, and with the members of our respective delegations, and I'm here to tell you briefly of its outcome. I must, at the outset, welcome warmly once again President Ruto and members of his delegation to Ghana and to Jubilee House, the seat of our nation's presidency. We thank him for graciously making this visit to Ghana and honoring us with his presence. The purpose of this visit by the Kenyan president is to reaffirm the ties of cooperation and the bonds of friendship that our two countries attach to our relations with each other especially at this time of great turbulence in global and continental spheres. Those relations were forged in colonial times in the common struggle of our two peoples to free ourselves from the yoke of colonialism and imperialism and create the conditions for lives of dignity and freedom for ourselves. In each succeeding generation, we rededicated ourselves to strengthening the ideals and values that animated that struggle. Ghana and Kenya established diplomatic relations shortly after Kenya gained her independence in 1963 and have been active participants in regional and international fora collaborating on issues of mutual interest such as peacekeeping, regional integration, and sustainable development. Trade and economic ties between our two nations have been growing steadily over the years with cultural exchanges, fostering a deeper understanding and appreciation of each other. We've supported each other on various international platforms including within the United Nations, the African Union, and the Commonwealth, advocating for common positions on issues such as peace and security, climate change, 
and sustainable development. Overall, these relations have been characterized by mutual respect, cooperation, and a shared commitment to advancing the interests of our respective nations and the African continent as a whole. Ladies and gentlemen, our deliberations centered on driving investment opportunities, domestic and foreign, into our two countries, and touched on the need for enhanced cooperation and partnership in our development efforts. I also use the opportunity of my talks with the President to express the appreciation of the Ghanaian people and their government, to the government and people of Kenya for the support we received in our bid to host the Secretariat of the African Continental Free Trade Area Agreement. The importance of the AFCFTA should not be lost on anyone, as its successful operation has the potential to transform the economic circumstances of the continent. Just as the first leaders of our two nations, Kwame Nkrumah and Jomo Kenyatta, were united by their common determination to free our peoples from foreign domination and racist exploitation. So we are united in our determination to win the battle for rapid economic development by helping to intensify the value-adding industrial transformation of our economies anchored on the things we make and grow. It is this transformation that will give us the best opportunity to derive maximum benefit from our abundant natural resources and from our participation in the AFCFTA and help bring prosperity and progress to our peoples. We acknowledge the significant strides made in our bilateral relations, particularly with the agreement on visa waivers for all categories of passports and further agreed to work assiduously to promote trade and investments, reiterating the shared determination to enhance economic cooperation and explore new avenues for trade cooperation and expansion within the framework of the AFCFTA. Indeed, the participation of Ghana, Kenya, and six other countries in the guided trade initiative of the AFCFTA will support stimulate intra-African trade, amplify our competitive advantage, and solidify our status within the global market. The GTI has enabled Ghana, for instance, to make significant inroads into the East African market, notably into Kenya and Tanzania. Over 700 AFCFTA certified products from Ghana, such as cosmetics, processed foods, beverages, coconut oil, shea butter, and garlands have been targeted at the AFCFTA market under the Guided Trade Initiative. We've also explored in greater detail possibilities of cooperation between Ghana and Kenya for the mutual benefit of our two people. The discussions in the areas of education, trade and industry, agriculture, defense cooperation, immigration, environment, science and technology, petroleum and hydrocarbon resources, tourism and security were held in an atmosphere of brotherly cordiality and fruitful exchanges. We also deliberated on several memoranda of understanding on various areas of cooperation between Ghana and Kenya of which two, namely the MOU on Binational Commission, the MOU on Cooperation between the Ghana Institute of Management and Public Affairs, and the Kenya School of Governance, have already been signed. The MOU between the Association of Ghana Industries and the Kenya Association of Manufacturers, the MOU between the Ghana National Chamber of Commerce and Industry, and the Kenya National Chamber of Commerce and Industry, and the MOU between the Ghana Investment Promotion Center and the Kenya Investment Authority are to be signed later today at the Business Forum. We express the hope that the implementation of these MOUs would invigorate 
and spearhead cooperation in various sectors between our two countries. On matters affecting the continent and on global issues, we also agree the current circumstances demonstrate the urgent need to put back on the global agenda the demand for the reform of the United Nations, especially the composition and structure of the Security Council, on the basis of the African Common Position on UN Reform, as enunciated in the Ezzawini Consensus. We also re reiterated our common call for an urgent rapid reform of the international monetary system to facilitate equity and fairness in the operation of the system to enable African countries gain easy access to capital to finance their development. We also stress on the need for Africa to take steps to address this issue on the principle of God helps those who help themselves by calling for African countries to invest a third of their sovereign reserves in African multilateral institutions such as the African Development Bank and the African Export and Import Bank, Afro-Exim Bank, in order to strengthen their balance sheets to help them mobilize more resources to finance Africa's development. This will be a better use of our resources than to allow them to lie passively in foreign banks, attracting negative interest rates, which is the present situation. This repeats the call made by Ghana at the last AU summit in Addis Ababa on 18 February 2024, which Kenya wholeheartedly supported. On the vexed matter of climate change, we restated our determination to help realize the global commitment of halving emissions by 2030 and attaining neutrality by 2050. We however believe that a balance must be struck and maintained between social, economic and environmental imperatives so as not to jeopardize Africa's prospects for development. We also call on the developed nations of the world responsible for 76 percent of carbon emissions as against Africa's 4 percent to honor their commitments to the developing countries of the world to assist in the fight against climate change, as agreed at both COP21 in Paris and COP26 in Glasgow. We reaffirmed our strong support for the Nairobi, the Nairobi Declaration that emanated from the 2023 Africa Climate Summit, which elaborated Africa's perspective on the green transition. Towards the realization of the 2030 United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, we touched on the need to promote a more equitable world by accelerating, even at this critical juncture, the processes relating to the accomplishment of the 17 goals. I noted the long-standing and excellent tradition of cooperation between Ghana and Kenya in various international fora including the United Nations and the Commonwealth, and expressed the desire for such cooperation to continue. I thus saw the support of President Ruto for the candidature of Ghana's dynamic Minister for Foreign Affairs and Regional Integration, the Honorable Shelley Ayoko Buchi, for the position of Secretary General of the Commonwealth at the forthcoming election for the position to be held during the 2024 Commonwealth Heads of Government meeting Shogun in Samoa later this year in October. I indicated to President Ruto that we in Ghana continue to reinforce our commitments in international peace and security, especially in helping to end the scourge of terrorism and violent extremism on the continent. We reject wholeheartedly the recent trend of coup d'etats and unconstitutional changes in Ghana that are threatening to derail democratic gains on the continent, especially in West Africa. It is our firm belief that stable democracies can help unleash the energies of the African people to inspire the transformation of the continent, and we are thus prepared to work with Kenya to advance the cause of democracy in Africa and around the world. I wish to reassure President Ruto 
the Ghana will continue to collaborate with Kenya to find solutions to challenges such as the eradication of widespread poverty, elimination of regular, irregular migration, insecurity and human rights violations, terrorism and violent extremism, human and drug trafficking, piracy, as well as climate change and its attendant negative impact on the environment and livelihoods. Mr. President, Ghana is determined to deepen her democratic governance, strengthen her institutions of accountability, and put her economy on a strong platform for rapid development. The vision remains that of a Ghana beyond aid, a self-reliant democratic Ghana that has freed herself from a mindset of dependence, aid, charity, and handouts, and is determined to make intelligent, disciplined use of her considerable resources as the basis for her growth and prosperity. In conclusion, I wish to express my sincere gratitude to President Ruto for honoring us with his visit to Ghana. Your President, Mr. President, has deepened the bonds of friendship between our two nations and set the stage for even closer cooperation in the years ahead. As we look to the future, let us seize the opportunities that lie before us and continue to work hand in hand for the prosperity and well-being of our people. Ghana stands ready to strengthen her partnership with Kenya in pursuit of our shared aspirations for a stronger Africa and a fairer world. Ladies and gentlemen of the media, I thank you very much for your attention. A round of applause. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Thank you very much, Mr. President. May I now respectfully invite the President of the Republic of Kenya, His Excellency Dr. William Ruto, for his remarks, please. Thank you very much. Your Excellency, my dear brother, President Nana Akufuado, I take this opportunity to express my great appreciation for extending your invitation for me to undertake this estate visit to Ghana. Let me also thank you most sincerely for the warm reception accorded to me and my delegation in this beautiful city of Accra and this great nation. Ghana and Kenya have strong and historic ties back to pre-independence period when our founding fathers fought for freedom against colonial rule so that our two nations could determine their own destiny. As I told you earlier, Mr. President, Ghana's independence was a great inspiration to many countries, including Kenya. And it is the reason why our founding fathers had common focus on liberating our two countries and giving the chance to our people to determine their destiny. Before this state visit, our respective delegations have discussed the elevation of our dedicated mechanism for the conduct of our bilateral relations from a joint commission for cooperation to a binational commission. Mr. President, that will give Kenya and Ghana an opportunity to elevate our interaction, our collaboration, and to expand the scope of what we can do together as nations and as our two peoples. During my discussions with President Nana Kupado, we have noted this development as a significant milestone in the evolution of our diplomatic ties. We stand on a warm and cordial, dynamic, and impactful historic collaboration. We've also agreed that the inaugural session of the Binational Commission will provide us with an opportunity to reaffirm our friendship, deepen our bilateral ties, and strengthen the noble course of African economic integration as exposed by our Africa Union Agenda 2063. 
Kenya and Ghana have enjoyed long-standing cordial relations since the 60s. This was preceded by pre-independent solidarity between our two leaders who were among the conveners of Pan-African conferences. The historic bonds of friendship between our two countries run deep. We are bound together by our shared commitment to Pan-African unity and a common vision for a united and prosperous Africa. It is appropriate that our two nations, which have long played strong roles in fostering Pan-African unity, also make similar contribution to the development of Pan-African trade integration. It is also imperative that we continue to strengthen our relations, enhance our solidarity, expand cooperation and deepen mutual understanding to unite and deliver inclusive economic growth for the peoples of our nations and for our continent. The Pan-African independent movement inspired many African countries that followed in Ghana's independence. Once again, in its capacity as the home of African Continental Free Trade Area Secretariat, Ghana is, leading, is a leading force in economic integration and development of 55 countries within eight regions economic communities in our continent. I thank you, Mr. President, for spearheading this development, for your support to the SCFDA Secretariat, and for your support to the Secretary General, and for Ghana's hosting of the Secretariat on behalf of our continent. Your Excellency, still on the subject of integration, and especially in accelerating the free movement of people within our continent, I welcome your recent announcement of your commitment to remove entry visa requirement for all Africans by December this year. This commitment aligns with one of the goals of the Africa Continental Free Trade Area to create a single market in the continent to drive economic growth, grow and create more jobs and eradicate poverty. I have informed President Akufuado that in similar vein, Kenya recently removed visa requirements for visitors from all countries with effect from January 1st this year. This underscores Kenya's commitment to complement Ghana in improving free movement, increasing trade, and building a stronger, more united continent. The free movement of people between our two countries has contributed immensely to trade, investment, and tourism. In this respect, His Excellency and I noted that trade between Kenya and Ghana is growing. In 2002, for example, in 2022, for example, Kenya's imports to Ghana were valued at 10.4 million US dollars, and imports were valued at 4.8 million US dollars. We have agreed that there remains great potential to enhance trade between our two countries, especially in the numerous opportunities arising from the establishment of the Africa Continental Free Trade Area. President Akufuado and I are encouraged that under the ACFTA, our two countries have taken bold measures to explore these opportunities. We recall that in October 2022, I flagged up from Nairobi the first consignment of Kenyan tea destined for Ghana. On 23rd September 2023, Kenyan made chloride exide batteries worth about 9.3 Kenyan shillings landed in the Ghanaian port of Tema, while Little Cup, a taxi hailing service from Kenya, is now also operational in Ghana. My brother and I noted that Ghana Export Promotion Authority facilitated Ghanaian business people to undertake a market entry expedition to Kenya between May 23rd and 27th last year and consequently, the Ghana Trade House was launched in Nairobi. Undeniably, this initiative represents a giant step towards greater trade within and among various regions and countries 
throughout our, Af our continent spearheaded by Ghana and Kenya. I congratulate you, Mr. President, for being appointed the champion for Africa Union for the establishment of the Africa Union financial institutions. This include the Africa Central Bank, the Africa International Monetary Fund, the Africa Investment Bank, and the Pan-African Stock, Stock Exchange. My brother and I discussed at great length on how these institutions, championed by His Excellency the President, and in fact when he spoke at the Africa Union in February, I endorsed wholeheartedly the building of these institutions as a mechanism of consolidating our own economic and financial situation in our continent. And I concur with His Excellency the President that we should, as African countries, invest in these institutions. And Kenya, last year, invested $40 million in AFRIEX in bank. We are considering investing in trade and development bank. We are considering investment, investing in all the other institutions as a way of putting a stamp of approval of these institutions and building their capacity to assist us develop our own financial institutions and leverage on them to um, acquire the much needed concessional financing to finance our own development. Your Excellency, as I have told you, you have my absolute support on this subject and as we work collaboratively and collectively as African leaders to consolidate the place of the Africa Union and rationalize its institutions and reform its institutions, a mandate that was assigned to me by my colleagues. What the President is championing is going to be part of the consolidation of the reform, of the enhancement of institutions that will support the progress and prosperity of our continent. I have informed uh, Mr. President that I'm looking forward to him working with me and all the other leaders to make sure that we have an Africa Union as an institution that is fit for purpose to drive the prosperity of our continent. My brother President, the establishment of this financial institution has always been at the center of the African integration agenda. The Abuja Treatment Treaty of 1991 Article 19 of the African Constitutive Act of 2000 provide for the creation of these financial institutions and is part of the AU Agenda 2063. Excellency, I wish to express utmost appreciation to the organizers of what we have today and what we will have later in the business forum and we will have an opportunity to address our business people, guide them, and provide them with the latitude for them to interact with our officials so that we can facilitate greater investment, more trade, and enhance our collaboration in a much meaningful way. During our meeting, we have noted that peace and security is fragile not only in Africa but across the globe. Internal strife, conflict and wars compounded by terrorism and violent extremism are a major obstacle to peace, security and stability. Statistics show that the number of people killed and forcibly displaced by crisis in Africa has been increasing over time. As of 2023, over 37 million people have been forcibly displaced in Africa and six countries account for 64% of forced displacement. Kenya appreciates and commends efforts by Ghana through the Accra Initiative and ECOWAS 
towards the fight, the fight against terrorism and in addressing resurgence of the unconstitutional changes of government in the Sahel and West African region. As a nation, Kenya looks forward to receiving continued support from Ghana in addressing terrorism and other threats so as to guarantee peace and security in Africa, in our region, and globally as well. I informed His Excellency the President that Kenya has been engaging in supporting peace initiatives in the whole Horn of Africa and the Great Lakes region, including DRC, South Sudan, Sudan, and Somalia. Kenya stands in support of all efforts, both in West and in our region, aimed towards fostering peace and security in our continent. It has become clear during our conversation that we have to redouble our efforts to silence the guns in Africa as a vital condition for the establishment of economic growth. We also have no choice but to endow the Africa Union our regional and our regional economic communities with greater capacity to do more in pursuit of peace and stability. Climate change is a global problem that is escalating out of control and requires urgent global action. However, we noted that Africa continues to endure the most of this crisis. The first ever Africa Climate Summit held in Nairobi September last year served as a platform for the African leadership to define and project a clear common position in the global climate action discourse in the run-up to COP28 and beyond. Subsequently, the Nairobi Declaration at the Africa Climate Summit and COP28 laid ground for swift, just, and equitable transition underpinned by drastic reduction in emissions and significantly enhancing climate financing. In this forum, as you all remember, we crafted a new narrative for our continent because it became necessary that we reorient and we draw a narrative that puts Africa in proper perspective, that it is possible for Africa to provide solutions rather than just being part of the problem. And for a long time, Africa has been defined and profiled as a continent of trouble, conflict, war, disease, and poverty. But we believe that that's not half the story. Correct narrative is that Africa is a continent of opportunity. And significantly changing the narrative is our assignment. Excellency, I take this opportunity to thank you for the support we have received during the summit in Nairobi and beyond. Your attendance underscored the unity of African leadership in formulating interventions and other commitments aimed at mitigating the rising impact of climate change by implementing homegrown solutions for the prevention, mitigation and recovery and respect to disasters arising from climate change. Your Excellency, you remember we also discussed and agreed that reforms are needed to give Africa a fit for purpose institution for the effective implementation of Agenda 2063 and we have agreed on common positions of how we are going to take this going into the future. Finally, on 15th March this year, the African Union Executive Council unanimously decided that candidates for the position of the next chairperson of the Africa, Commission, Africa Union Commission would be nominated by the Eastern African region states in accordance with the statutes of the AU Commission, the rules of procedure, and the Africa Union policy organs and decisions of the Assembly of Heads of State and Government. Your Excellency, my dear brother, I thank you most sincerely for accepting to support Kenya's candidature for the position of the chairperson of the Africa Union Commission 2025-2028, which has been initiated following comprehensive stakeholder engagement process across government.
Kenya's candidature is informed by our leading role in enhancing and sustaining the Pan-African agenda in terms of independence and sovereignty, peace and security, development and prosperity, as well as sustainability and climate action. We hope to work with all as we try to achieve Africa's 2063 agenda. On our part, I have assured His Excellency that Kenya will support the Republic of Ghana for the candidature of Honorable Charlie Bochi, Minister of Foreign Affairs and Regional Integration for the position of Secretary General of the Commonwealth for the period 2024-2029. <laughs> Excellency, this presents an opportunity for Kenya and Ghana to collaborate. I take this opportunity to assure Your Excellency of my personal support and commitment of the Republic of Kenya to working with you and the government of the Republic of Ghana to further strengthen the bonds of friendship between our two countries. I wish Your Excellency, the great people of Ghana, my very best wishes and prosperity. Thank you very much. And God bless you. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, shall we honor these two great leaders of our time? Indeed, two illustrious sons of Mother Africa with a resounding and a deafening round of applause, please. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Now we will sign the guest book. May I invite Your Excellency to sign the guest book for us, please. Thank you. 